To thee we come, O Lord our God. that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of your conscience. <clears throat> Having confessed our sins unto God, let us all recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord our God has indeed let us see his glory and his majesty. We have heard his voice from the midst of the fire and have found out today that a man can still live after God has spoken with him. Lord, by thy power, great you are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your glory, you glory in your Son Jesus, who was wondrously transfigured before his chosen disciples. Change us into him as his image, that we will whip willingly bear our cross we may be strengthened by his saving words we ask this through the same jesus christ who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god forever and ever Amen. josh would you proclaim the word today please
first reading is from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He, he called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possessions of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. Behold, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All of us gazing with unveiled face on the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory as from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Josh. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over to, for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. Christ Jesus, it is, he, it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Josh. His divine power has bestowed on us everything that makes for life and devotion. Through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and power. Through these he has bestowed on us the precious and very great promises, so that through them we may come to share in the divine nature, after escaping from the corruption that is in the world because of the evils that are. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with her burning coal, cleanse my heart. Through thy gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow of them. From the cloud came a voice, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. 
as they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up to a high mountain. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel according to St. Mark in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, do you know that it was toward the end of the life of Jesus that his transfiguration took place? He had only days before he spoke to his apostles about his coming death. The announcement of his dying must have shaken the very core of their beings. We read in Matthew chapter 16 verse 21, from that time on Jesus began to show the, his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day he was to be raised. We continue to read of Peter, who had taken Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. How shocked they must have been to hear this prediction of Jesus. To this Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. They had all seen the power of God manifested in Jesus' many miracles and acknowledged the wisdom of God in Jesus in his teachings. How could the Messiah, God's chosen one, suffer and die as Jesus had predicted? There may also have been doubt by some questioning themselves if Jesus was truly the Messiah, one who was to die in order for the kingdom of God to come present. And so Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his inner circle of the apostles, to a high mountain apart and away from the other apostles. Jesus then began to pray. He asked the disciples to pray, and they all fell asleep. When they awoke, they see Jesus standing before them with an indescribable manifestation of light and glory. This was the proof that they would need to help strengthen them for the events that would soon take place in Jerusalem. This was 
to be the proof of his divinity and confirmed that he indeed was the Messiah. This manifestation was also to show the glory that would come following his crucifixion and death. The whole purpose of this experience was to reinforce the staggering faith of those apostles experienced on Easter, the Pentecost, and the years to come. But with this re most remarkable event, Jesus was not alone. For there were three, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. The importance of Moses and Elijah being with Jesus was to be assigned to them that Jesus was to fulfill the law and the prophets. Years earlier as Jesus delivered the Sermon on the Mount, he said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but rather to fulfill them. Moses represented the Jewish law, for Moses was the giver of the law, the Torah. And Elijah represented Jewish prophecy, for he was considered to be the greatest of all the Old Testament prophets, all who were to be the spokesmen of God. This was to be the only other time when the voice of God was heard. The first was at the beginning of Jesus' ministry at his baptism, found in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and in reference to the Gospel of John. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, we read that John the Baptist heard a voice from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This time, at the transfiguration of the Lord, as found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Peter, James, and John heard the voice of God, who said, This is my Son, the Beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. It has been said that the transfiguration of Jesus was a time when human nature as found in Peter, James, and John, met God on the mountaintop. They were to be the pillars of the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as Moses met God on Mount Sinai, and where Elijah met God on Mark Horeb, they saw the manifestation and the glory of God. Peter, the outspoken one, would go on to write three epistles or letters to all of Christian dumb. He would later be crucified upside down during the reign of Nero, approximately 67 AD. James the Greater would be the first of the apostles to suffer martyrdom by the sword in approximately 44 AD by Herod Agrippa. He is the only apostle whose death is recorded in the New Testament. St. James is the patron saint of Spain, and according to tradition, his remains are held in Santiago de Compatella in Galatia. John, the beloved apostle, would go on to write three epistles or letters and go on to write the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ written between 90 and 100 AD prior to his natural death on the island of Patmos. My brothers and sisters on that mountaintop Jesus brought Peter, James and John to the place where the temporal man was to meet the eternal God with Jesus himself as the connecting point, the bridge between heaven and earth, 
Peter, James, and John would go on to declare their faith in their ministries of the divinity of Jesus through their many experiences. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. In the adventure of Apollonius Christus.
Heavenly Father, through this holy oblation, may we who in faith perceive the mystery of the transfiguration enter into the fellowship of his sufferings. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. The whole Lord be with you. To the Lord our God. It is right to give him and Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through our fasting, you increase divine life within us. You preserve us from sin and lead us into eternal life. Through our abstinence, you confirm us in goodness and curb our unbridled vices. And so as we commemorate the 40 days of fasting of your Son, may we together with him give unto you glory. Therefore we join this day with the voices of angels and archangels, along with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy catholic church that you would guide it in peace defense and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests especially anthony our prime bishop and paul our bishop and all who profess their true orthodox and catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles remember your servants O lord In all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer who offer up to you the sacrifice and praise of themselves and all their own for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love, to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and with spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his heavenly Father, in giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the Son of Faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching. Uh, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Blessed and glorious Mother of God, 
Mary, together with your blessed apostles Peter and Paul, also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father, in the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing through this communion. Make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy. Receive the body of the Lord.
For God formed man to be imperishable, the image of his own nature, he made him. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, Lord our God, in the glorious transfiguration of your Son, you conformed the witness of the prophets and foreshadowed our adoption as your children, grant that we who have shared at your altar may become co-heirs with Christ and partakers in their glory. We ask this in the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the whole unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. of our worship be pleasing to you most holy trinity grant that the sacrifice which i though unworthy have offered up into the sod of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through christ our lord amen, amen. may the almighty and merciful god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen, amen. the lord be with you and also be
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness the death did, did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 